what you think now that God is beginning to rebuild. It's how you think. It's how you think that will affect your experience. You know, when Gideon, Gideon was, was told to go out and do some stuff, in, in uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 15, this is some, some things that people do. You know, you, 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 you're all right by yourself. But when somebody says, man, you, know, you need to go and share that, you need to go share that, and you might need to stand up before the church and stay there, you start saying, oh, I don't know about that. No. I don't know about that. Man, 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 man. Well, a lot of times what you say, they go, oh, no, I don't know nothing. <laughs> Amen. But what, what happens is that God steps in. That's why he says when you take before, taken before the master, magistrate, I'm going to recall everything that I have said to you. I'll speak out of your life. Amen. So now I can't have a divided mind. So what he's saying, well, listen, listen to what Gideon says. So he said to him, oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Now, he's telling them he can. Indeed, my clan, now I'm just going, is the weakest in all of Manasseh. Amen. I am the least in my father's house. I am the worst one. I'm the one that you, I couldn't believe. Joseph Prince said he used to stutter and that he, he, was, he would be shaking and sweating to talk in front of seven people. It would just be like just, just such a, 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 a traumatic experience for him. But look at what you do when you begin to take the step that God said. He puts in you what you could not see. Why? Because your discernment is not clear who you are yet. It's not clear. You hadn't you hadn't known it, but if you don't take the step, I, hey, we got a song. You step, I step, just like that. When you move, I move, just like that. Hey, I know them song. Come on, somebody. Well, you hear me? But when you make a move for God, now you have to do it, even when you're fearful with them. God said, I understand. Take the step. Just take the step. Like when your father was put you on that dresser, everybody made, I had one. I had that experience. My father said, jump. And you, I mean, he right there. He's two inches. But I don't trust you, bro. <laughs> huh? But if you take the step, you'll find out. Even if you fail, you know next time. Hallelujah. So the thing about it, Gideon had to make that step. And how many feel like that today? You feel like I don't have nothing to add to Christ. I really don't retain anything. And not realizing that it's not immediately apparent to you in your discernment that because you don't, it's because you can't. That's why you can't. That's why you can't. Because you don't, it's why you can't. Amen? So that it isn't, listen, it's not about the smartest or the best looking or most athletic and the strongest. We are used to seeing people like that, and we'll push them to the front. We push Clyde to the front every time. Clyde going out there and do it. Now, I can't catch nothing, but he can, so I'll just stand where he stands. And he move, I move just like that. Amen. <laughs> Hello. Why, Bob? Because my experience in life is always going to be how I think and how I think in my life about even how about myself. I think about myself is really the experience I'm getting ready to have. I'm going to have it all my life. Not some of it, all my life until I step. Judges chapter 6, verse 14 through 16. Do 6 and 14 first, and then we'll just do them one at a time, Pastor Rob, if you can. And then the Lord turned to him and said, what does he say? Go in this might of who? Of yours. Now, that is a strange thing to say. How is God saying to you that I've got might? I just got to telling you. I'm the least of the least. He says, what God is saying, if you believe what I'm saying about you, you have this might. That's why Paul says, even when I'm weak, then I am made strong. So Gideon says that, listen, I, listen, in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hands of the media life. Have I not sent you? Now God is beginning to tell me, I'm sending you if you believe. So he said to him, oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. And verse 16 says this, and the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites. And listen, as one man. Now, when we get this, well, we are, I had me some divine revelation until I had discernment that I might not want to talk about that one phrase as one man until I got some clarity. Amen? Because my immediate thought was as one man, as Christ being with me and, and uh, together in me in, in Gideon. 
meaning that I'm going to take them. That spirit is going to be upon you like that. And God says, no, I'm talking about your enemy. I'm a what he's really saying is, I'm going to destroy them all. Wow. Think about it. Everything that stands against you as one man, I'm going to destroy them. And what God is saying here is not so much that I want to kill your enemy, it's that I want to correct them. It's that I want them to see me moving in your life just as much as you want them to see, be, uh, uh, God to be seen in your life. And all of Israel standing before, and now Gideon has to change his thinking. He has to say, I got to get out this, of this wine press. We got to come out of these caves. We got to stand and do some stuff. But I got to start correcting some stuff in my own house. Says, Whoa, wait a minute. Hold up, wait a minute. And listen to what Paul says about this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. This is the thing that, that Gideon is stuck with. But then also in the New Testament, God says something about this. He says this, this I say, therefore. And testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. See, they begin to say something now. There's just a revelation of a difference. In the fruitility of their mind, I mean, their mind, their mind is fruitful. Is they don't see clearly. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. And this is what that God is really doing with Gideon right here. Is he's giving him the proposed life that he's looking for. And this is the thing about when you are alienated from the life of God, you are separated from the life of God. Your life is split open, and now you don't know which way to go, and you are not even able to act out the, 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 uh, the things that, are, that come out of my mouth that says God this. But because it's not in me, it's, the, it's not able to divide me. It's not be able to take that which is contrary and push it away from me, but I might live that life that is before me. Even though I have grace, grace is not what? It is not, it's the power not to do the sin, not the excuse after you have done it. Remember that. Grace, God will give you the grace, but he says you don't even have to do that sin. You know why this sin comes? Because this is what you did. And the word begin to show you. Then now when you stop doing those things, you change how you think. Even, listen, it, even when it comes, it's like smoking cigarettes for me. I used to smoke almost two packs, two packs a day. That's right, me. I can't even stand the smoke of it. I don't even want to be around it because it, it, it bothers me more than the average person. Not to make me want to do it, but it's more sinful to me now. It's like, ugh, can't believe. Cigarettes and coffee. <laughs> Whoa, I was hurting people. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the thing about it is this, because then he says this, because of the ignorance that is within them. Oh, let me go back. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance. Everybody say ignorance, ignorance. that is in them. You know, that's, that's some thing. Ignorance does not mean stupid. Does not mean dumb. It means not knowing. This is the definition. The lack of knowledge of or the lack of knowledge about. I just don't know. Now, when you know, now it becomes dumb. <laughs> now it becomes a little crazy. Amen? It's like if I'm going to the edge of the, uh, uh, of the cliff, and I, listen, it's apparent to me that it's a long way down there. I ain't playing around with that. I'm not going to even get close enough because I've been to the mountaintop. And I've seen the drop. <laughs> Hallelujah. So understand what that is. So their ignorance, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their, say it, hearts. You will do everything that is in your heart regardless. You will do everything in your heart. In Proverbs uh, chapter 14, and verse 12, it says this, that there is a way that seems right to man, to a man. But its end is the way of death. And it don't have to be a physical death. It can just destroy your, your relationship with other people. It'll destroy your relationship with Christ. You, you, if you want, somebody, if you want to uh, get someone who, uh, that's really having struggles in their life about God, the first thing he does is he keeps you out of the house of God. He don't want you to keep hearing. Why? Because he understands that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Of the Lord. It's, it's what happens to you in your life. You have to learn to sit under teaching. So now when I'm taught a thing, see, Israel didn't do like when, when we, uh, through all of our early years, I, I thought that's how you did Christ. Well, in my, my Lord, ha, yeah, ha, 
Hey, Lord. Huh. And, and, and you know what? I'm hey, Lord, with him. And everybody going, yeah, and going home and doing the same stuff we've been doing because nobody taught me anything different. God wants you to know. He wants you to take time. That's like having them rappers that be going, you think you would be talking about your mama and you don't even know. You just sing it right along with them. But you can't understand nothing they say. God wants you to understand what he is saying to you. And as you get that understanding, now you can rightly divide the word of truth. There is a, a split and open that happens. You have a, a, a mind that knows the evil and you have a mind on the, uh, that also knows the good. And you want that. You don't want just to divide it, but you want that good to take over that evil. You want it to take over both sides. You don't want to just leave it in half every time. Amen. So this is what God began to tell Gideon. He's, Gideon had to go and he had to step out in, 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 in uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 25 and 27. I'm going to come back to 26, but I want you to see what he's talking about here in, in Judges 6. Now, Gideon's got to do something. You've got to step out. You can't just, just leave it as that. You can't just leave the service feeling good and just go away on your own merry way. It's not what this is about. It's about how we believe. Whatever it is that I'm believing is going to be my experience. How I say things to myself and how I think about things is going to be in my experience. And this is what it, uh, Gideon had to do. And now it came to pass that same night. Everybody say the same night. The same night. He didn't hesitate. He did that same night that the Lord said to him, take your father's young boy. Everybody say, take your father's stuff. Oh, take your father's stuff. No, he's telling him the something. Why? Because now we're seeing that the father's got something he shouldn't have. And he's asking God to help him with the old gods. Amen? So now, no, man, y'all better hear me because I'm getting ready to say something. I want you to give me. Here, he said, take your father's bull, the second bull of seven years. Say seven years. Seven years. Oh, man, seven is a significance, right? It has, man. I'm going to tell you in a minute. But it says, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it. Oh, I, I missed the whole sentence, didn't I? The second bull is of seven years old. And tear down the altar of everybody say Baal or Baal, whichever one you want to say. Baal that your father has. And cut down the wooden image that is beside him. Y'all always hear me? Now, he got to do some things. He's got to take, nah, I want you to take that stuff that you already know about. And I need you to do something with it. I don't need you to leave it there. I need you to do something with the stuff that you have in you right now. I need you to go and do something with it. And then in verse 27, so, so Gideon took how many? Ten men. Mm -mm -mm. What's the number 10? Judgment. Always judgment, y'all. And say, listen, he took the ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day. So he did it by night. Now, when I first saw this, I said, that brother didn't have no faith. No, God said he had wisdom. Why? Because it's, you might remember how we used to say in the military, it's better to beg forgiveness or permit before you ask permission. <laughs> Amen. Huh? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just too late now. <laughs> you know, man? Amen. Officers used to say that all the time. It's better to beg, hey, just beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. We're doing it. Amen. So he went in there and he did it and he tore it down. He tore it down by night. What did he take? He took the young bull, the second bull that was seven years. And you know that seven is a, actually is, is the, um, is, is the, uh, is the, uh, the foundation of the church, the seven churches. Huh? The seven full lamps. Huh? The seven times. You say, should we forgive him seven times? He said, no, 70 times seven. God is always using sevens for new beginnings. He's always in, in completion. I'm getting ready to do a complete work in Israel right now. Take that bull that's seven years old to signify it. What does bull mean? A bull is a symbol of increase. It's always that which is strong, man. That boy, you know, we used to have a saying in our back, uh, back in our day uh, when you were real musty. They say, boy, you strong as a bull right now. Or uh, uh, the second one was that uh, you strong like Jack Johnson. And a lot of y'all don't know who Jack Johnson is. He was the only black fighter who was beating up everybody. <laughs> man, Take them out. But he would say, they would say, that strong thing, you need to go wash yourself. Amen. But, you know, inside in this, God says, I'm going to take the bull. Bull was one of the things of the gods that were in Israel. That's what, that, I mean, in, uh, in uh, Egypt. In Egypt, they had bulls there, man. I'm, I'm kind of fumbling the stomach. Y'all stay with me, though. Amen. 
So the bull means strength and increase. And God says, I'm going to take your God, your idol gods. And I'm going to use it. I want you to take that bull and cut him up. See, that's what I want you to use him for in your increase. And he says, and then I want you to take him from seven because now I'm going to found, I'm going to completely root out some stuff that is going on before you. I need you to do something. Else. I need you to tear down the very thing that's holding me back from helping you. Oh, yeah, you know mom and them gave you some. God don't expect you to be perfect. Oh, you young, go on out there and do what you got to do. You taking some of them religious things and applied it to your life and contributed to a young, but Ecclesiastes say, send me the young men and women. He said, I need you in the day of your youth. Not when you get old and you got no other choice because you're so close to the grave, you want to make sure that you're getting in. Hallelujah. He said, I don't want you now where you are, where you're thinking, where you are right now. That don't mean because I'm older now that I can't be used. I'm dreaming dreams, and you're seeing visions. And handmaidens, let me tell you something. Prophecy means preach. Amen? If you go and look it up, if the handmaidens are preaching too. as George Myers. Amen? Beth Moore. Hallelujah. Pastor Nanette. Minister Kim and Ann. Tyrone. Hallelujah. Matt just closed us out yesterday on something. Hallelujah, man. That was some good stuff. We had, oh, I, had, I went home and slept well. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said he was in there shopping with his wife. I'm going to take the sidebar just to tell him. And they were looking at rugs over in the, in the PX. And uh, he didn't know they were finishing one another's sentences. And saying a young lady came up there to him and said, y'all must have been married a long time. He said, because y'all just, y'all finishing one another's sentences. Y'all just all in tune. And he said, the Holy Spirit said to him, that's how you should be with me. You should finish my sins. Woo! I just, I got chills on that one. I was like, oh, my goodness. Y'all come on, give. Them. That preach all by, it. that's a whole new sermon. Amen? Because when we think, when we think about it, what I'm saying to you is this. What, what Gideon had to get to a point is that there's some things that's in my life, how I see God blocks me from having the life of God within me and being able to see it lived out before me and in and through me and that it will affect other people because what he's asking Gideon to do is going to affect all of Israel and also the Amalekites and uh, the Amalekites and the, uh, the Amalekites and the Minyites, Minyites, uh, Isaacites, right, right. All them people, Midianites. Amen? Okay, I'm tongue-tied, but y'all got the meeting, right? Just clap if you, if you got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what, what Gideon has to do now, God says, I need you to do something first. I need you to tear some stuff down. I need you to go to the place where they are. In Judges 6 and 26, it says this. And now I need you to do something else. I need you to build an altar. To the Lord your God on top of this stronghold with stones laid in its proper order. He said, I don't need them to be out of order. I need them to be laid in order. See, this is what God is saying. I need you to have your life in order. I need you to start getting some stuff in order. And the only way that you're going to ever listen to me completely is that you leave out of your father's stuff, uh, the stuff that you've learned throughout all of your life. I'm telling you, every church and everywhere I've been to in my life has actually actually landed me in the, having the experiences that I, I've had. And then a lot of times I'm sad to say, that most Christian people have had bad experiences because they were...